CustomShirtInc.com. Screen printing in the digital age. CustomShirtInc.com. Phone 888-626-7636. Friday weather forecast. Mostly sunny skies will continue today. The high in the mid-40s. Light southwest winds. 33-34 overnight. Partly to mostly clear. Light winds will continue. A weather system coming in from the west will give us a chance of rain showers later Saturday, Saturday night. Mostly cloudy skies Saturday, the high near 50. Showers and maybe a thunderstorm, breezy to windy on Sunday, highs in the low 60s. We'll keep you updated. Educate, entertain, and empower. We're KLEK 102.5 FM. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Ollie Barrett. Two parents accused of torturing their 13 children at their home in California have pleaded not guilty in court. U.S. lawmakers have until the end of Friday to pass a spending bill to avoid a government shutdown. New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has confirmed she's expecting a baby in June and a storm barreling through northern Europe has now killed at least eight people. It's 9.01. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday to you. I hope that you're having a great start to this chilly morning. I don't know about you, but I've been looking forward to Friday. I just need a little time to rest. I need my Saturday. So you're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Kobila Harden, and my very special guest today is Miss Shannon Smithy. It's my Smithy. Smithy. I'm always going back and forth with that. Smithy. She is from the Arkansas State University Bradbury Museum, formerly known as the Bradbury Gallery. So thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you so much for having me back. And so today we're going to be talking about um, uh, one, ex- I don't call it exhibit, um, <laughs> it's not an exhibit. Yes, ma'am. Exhibit would be appropriate. Yes. Okay, exhibit. Mm -hmm. One exhibit that just started, and then we're going to go into some others that are coming. um, So you know what to look forward to and how to plan your schedule accordingly. So, well, first, let's get a brief introduction of Miss Shannon. You've been here before, but it's been a while. So please introduce yourself again to our listeners and viewers. Thank you so much for having me back. My name is Shannon Smithy. I am the education curator at the Bradbury Art Museum. I'm in charge with uh, scheduling tours, special events. Events, doing community outreach and just bringing uh, awareness about the Bradbury Art Museum and uh, letting people know that we're here we're open to the public admission free okay and we want to invite the community to come and visit and also you do work within the community as well yes ma'am I um, I work at I do a class at City Youth Ministries uh, in the afternoon uh, once a week uh, with the kids out there and we're hoping to try to have an exhibit in um, kind of like working on an exhibition space to show the kids work sometime this spring we're hoping so that's kind of in the works maybe it might end up being a a few months down the line but I'm so excited to work with those kids Uh, they they love it and we're hoping to like bring them into the museum too to do a tour uh, working on those dates as we speak trying to get a date and um, I'm also trying to work with uh, you know, different entities like retirement facilities. Oh. I've been trying to reach out to those places and really hoping, like even like church groups would be great. Like I can do tours with any kind of group, small or large. All right, so mm-hmm. you've heard it here. Everyone that's listening, um, please consider taking a tour of the Bradbury Art Museum. Get to know what is here. Do you feature a lot of local artists? Well, the Bradbury Art Museum features contemporary art that uh, showcases art that you would not otherwise be able to see in this region. Uh, So people that are national and even international artists are going to be exhibited at the Bradbury Art Museum. Sometimes we'll have local shows, but that's usually about, um, I think that we're going to try to do a local series that's every other year, I think is the plan. Um, But typically it's... Like right now in the Delta National Small Prince exhibition that's currently up, there may be some artists who have entered the exhibit uh, who are from 
here, but it actually uh, pulls people from all over the country. All right, so let's go ahead and get into that event. It is um, called the 2018 Delta National Small Prints Exhibition. So explain for those who may not know, and I'm, I don't really know what small prints mean. So printmaking entitles like all types of techniques. There are so many printmaking techniques that it would we could exhaust ourselves okay. trying to talk about all the kinds of printmaking. But essentially, let's say that you draw a picture and you would like to have a copy of that picture. Printmaking involves making multiples, an addition. Oh. So a lot of times you will carve into a block, like a linoleum block, it's called a lino cut, okay. or even wood, and you carve away the surface to, and then you apply ink to that surface oh. and then it's almost like a stamp so stamping is a kind of printmaking okay and then you stamp that onto a piece of paper um and there's all kinds of technical things that can go involved can be involved it can be a very uh laborious uh project okay lots of steps and then you create an addition and a lot of times an artist will have an addition number so let's say that I decide that I'm gonna do a 100 okay you could end up making 100 of those pieces and then you um you can enter them into all these different exhibits and you, you would sell them oh. individually and people love to collect them. It's a great, printmaking is a great artwork to collect. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think like for me, as you're speaking, I'm thinking I love fabric and I love sewing. So that's how I can relate printmaking. Um, I watched the show Project Runway and they've had to design their own print and so they had to do some things by hand so I do okay I get it absolutely now. so um that's what I love about art and like talking about art and bringing awareness about art in our world and like printmaking is a great place to like show that we experience art all the time in our clothing like a poster okay. so silk screening is a really common type of printmaking you will see it on t-shirts Oh. And silk screening, you'll see it like on posters, like really lovely. Po Imagine like a really beautiful band poster or like a okay. musical group that would have like a really lovely uh, poster that's uh, silk screening. But you would also see it on T-shirts. And then other kinds of places, like I know that there's like a lot of DIY okay. uh, fashion stuff where you could pr you could print like on a skirt or on a sh you know clothing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. So the possibilities are endless when it comes yes, to art. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, creating, <laughs> recreating, and all that good stuff. So let's talk about some of the uh, people that are going to be there on the website. If you would like to learn more about this, go to www.bradbury b-r-a-d-b-u-r-y artmuseum.org and at the top of the screen go to events or ex well events and then it'll show you what's upcoming um and so that's where we are on the upcoming events now this one actually open on the 18th yes we opened just last night okay yeah so um I don't know, so we're going to talk about the people, but I'm sorry. Let's back well, that, up a little bit. We can continue talking about the Delta National. Yeah, there's still a, a little bit more to add about that. Well, what, mm -hmm. the, what was the um, uh, attendance like, the feedback, some of the attitudes of we, the people that came? We had a great turnout. It was a lovely event. Um, it was so nice to see the attendance of all you know people from the community. Um, and I heard a lot of really amazing uh, comments. We um, People really enjoyed it. I had people from all ages. I had kids in there who seemed like they were really having a great time. <laughs> and then we had some of our, you know, um, patrons that you know come to see us at every opening who okay. said that they really enjoy the exhibit and that it was kind of a different type of um, exhibit than like what they normally see so we call it the DNSPE for short okay. and this exhibit has been going on for approximately we're coming up on 25 years okay. I think coming uh, pretty close maybe it's like 23 years and it was started by 23 years of the small print exhibit yes ma'am oh wow um, and so it's a long-standing exhibit for our area and there are people who enter it every single year. They actually get in every single year. And so what that means is it's juried. That means that we choose a prominent person in printmaking, someone who's an expert in printmaking, okay. and then people submit their art, They, like people who decide that they want to put their 
prints into the exhibit. Okay. They start sending those images in like at the end of the summer, I think somewhere like between like August and October. Okay. And then we'll have our juror actually judge the work and she picks out what is in the exhibit and this year we had mary weaver chapin uh the curator of prints and drawings at the portland art museum was okay. our juror and um the feedback that i had was that it was a really different dnspe that from previous years okay so uh, let's talk about the uh two people that are listed on the website uh robin horn um and under that is listed spatial differences so, so this is a separate that. exhibit. So in the museum, we have six gallery spaces and the DNSPE is in four of those gallery spaces. And then you have the opportunity to see two special exhibitions. One is Robin Horn, Spatial Differences, and it is a lovely exhibit of beautiful wooden sculptures and paintings. The wooden sculptures are uh, wooden assemblages and they are absolutely lovely. They are made with one piece of wood and it okay. is kind of amazing because they look like maybe that they're multiple pieces of wood that are kind of like wedged together or nailed together, glued together, but it's one piece of wood and she actually carves them with a chainsaw. And they are absolutely lovely. I, I, I really recommend and uh, would love to invite the community to come out and see these pieces. Um, that is in the opening, the entrance gallery, right when you walk into the museum, we have her uh, set up in there. And then we have John Keach, He's, his exhibition is Wizards and War Games. John Keach is actually a professor emeritus from ASU. Okay. He was in the art department, a drawing professor. I actually took his classes oh. when I was a student. <laughs> and uh, he has this amazing installation uh, so he does these pieces where it's kind of like a printmaking technique where he paints on plexiglass and then he removes the paint from the plexiglass with different kinds of uh, objects. I'm actually not exactly sure how he makes them, <laughs> um, but it's the really lovely. So he does like black paint on the plexiglass and then he removes some of it. So it kind of creates this clear area where it's textured and then they're backlit and he's created these really large installation um, boxes these illuminated boxes and then the room is really dimmed and so it creates this like very dramatic lovely experience and um, he will actually be giving a talk on January 24th at okay. 3 p.m. Uh, he's going to do a demonstration and kind of a Q&A on his process and that's inside of uh, Bradbury Art Museum. I believe that's a Wednesday, January 24th at three. And you can find all of our events on our uh, website. Okay, so is this the black and white picture that I'm yes, looking at? Okay, mm -hmm. now tell us a little bit more about the other two pictures that are listed or that are posted on the website. So on the website that you're looking on the upcoming page, the first two images that you see are from the Delta National Small Prints Exhibition. Okay. Both of those are prints. I believe that the one on the left that uh, looks like, I think it's um, cells. I be believe she said okay. that they were... Um, that is Marilee Salvatore. It's called Composition C3. It's from 2016 and it is an etching and wood lithograph. Oh. And it measures 22 by 30 inches. Um, it's a really lovely piece. Um, it's like one of, I think I read her statement and it said that it's about how cancer is this really devastating thing but underneath the microscope it can be kind of beautiful to look at so she's kind of like making some challenges there um it's a lovely piece i um uh, i really enjoy that one the, i love the colors in it and then the other piece that we have uh, on the website is rebecca mccannell it's patio chairs from 2015 it's a three color lithograph with silk screen and it is 16 by 16 inches. And that one is absolutely lovely when you see it in person. Um, whenever you look at these prints, sometimes I think it's interesting to think, I wonder how they did that. Yes, <laughs> because I'm looking at the one with the chairs and the shadowing is impeccable. It's beautiful. Um, it's as if someone was standing on a balcony or something looking down and captured the moment when the sun was just right. And <laughs> it's really, really beautiful. And to think that this was done 
not on a computer but by hand or some other form. some artists still may use a computer i mean i'm not exactly sure on this artist's process but she may have taken a photograph and then done some things in the computer and then done things by hand as well it, that's kind of what i was meaning by there can be so many steps involved that yes. when you're looking at the piece it can be deceptively simple or easy but actually they may have put so much work into it that months and months and months of work that you may not even be aware of um so like this piece when i was looking at it it says three color lithographs so whenever an artist makes a print like this they may have actually three separate panels that they're working with for each color so each color has its own block that they create and you have to measure them up just right so that they line up it sounds kind of confusing i think if you're just listening and you're not having a reference it can be kind of confusing sounding so um i'm just enjoying looking at it and yeah, i would love to see the process in but i'm sure the artist put a lot of work into it and i would I would still love to see the process of, uh, but I don't want to take away the mystery of, you know, I don't want to know the whole thing because I want to just enjoy the piece. Because ma art can be magic. <laughs> yes. Yes, art is definitely magic. And sometimes knowing everything behind it can kind of take away the uh, the specialness to it, right? But, yes. but, but I really believe that uh, having a little bit of background can be really helpful. And we are actually offering a printmaking oh. uh, workshop coming up on January 21st at 2 p.m. Okay. We're starting a special series called Weekend Workshops at BAM. And um, there's still room to sign up for this uh, event, this weekend workshop. Um, we will meet in BAM studio and have a quick tour of the Delta National. I'll show you the, the prints and we'll talk about printmaking a little bit. And then we'll walk down to BAM studio, which is in the Fowler Center. And I have, I actually am going to be working with um, an A-State printmaking student who is uh, really excited and she's going to be involved and we're going to do different printmaking techniques. All right, so this Sunday at 2 p.m., but you must register um, and you can go to, again, bradberryartmuseum.org, click on events and it will take you to a calendar. Um, Make sure to give you all the right steps. Yes, to take you to a calendar, and you click on the 21st on the 21, and scroll down and fill in the registration form and submit. Um, space is limited, so first come, first serve. I think well, I have right around now, four or five seats open. Okay. I think that we have about six or seven people in there right now, and I can hold up to 12 and this class would be best for teens and up and I would like to really point out that this is absolutely admission free admission free so it's just a first come first serve but if you sign up then everything is included you do not have to bring anything no. you do not need any printmaking experience this is a beginner class but so if you I'm have some you. printmaking experience I'm sure that you would still enjoy it and the Bradbury Art Museum is located at 201 Olympic Drive here in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Um, can you give us kind of some directions if someone's on campus, how to navigate to the yes. museum? So if you are um, on Aggie Road and you're, you're coming down from Red Wolf and you make that left onto Aggie Road. Okay. And then you would make a right onto Olympic Drive and you would be going along and the first side of the building would be of the Fowler Center that you would approach would be the theater department side. Okay. So our entrance is on the north side of the Fowler Center. We actually face the Convocation Center, which is now F&B yes. Arena, formerly the Convocation Center. So if you're standing in front of the Fowler Center, you would see the, the F&B Arena. Okay. And the parking out there is av available to any visitor. You do not need an A-State tag. Okay. Um, and then to our to the side of us, to give more of a reference, would be the baseball diamond oh, is next okay. to us. And then if you were standing in front of the Fowler Center and you were looking um, towards F&B, you would also see the football stadium. And we're kind of in that whole area, the north portion of A-State. Okay. All right. Again, and this is Sunday, uh, January 21st from 2 to 3 p.m. This is 
weekend workshops introduction to printmaking and like Miss Shannon said you don't have to have any previous skills knowledge of printmaking all the tools you need will be will be provided for you at this event uh, but you need to please register um, if you go on their website you can submit a registration form and just I think it asks how many people will be attending. Yes. Yes. It's just your name, your email address, number of adults, and number of teens. Again, she said this is probably more suited towards teens, teens and up. I think so. If you had a kid that was uh, particularly uh, talented and skilled in art and just really loved art, you know, maybe like a 10, 11, 12 year old, um, I could see where maybe that would be fine um just kind of like you know use your best judgment on if you have a kid who just you think that would do well with it it is open to all ages um and i kind of really enjoy that type of environment the last workshop that we had um back in december we did an ornament workshop and we had a family we had a mother and a daughter like an adult mother and daughter and we had some other people in the community and it was just a really lovely event to have all ages that is wonderful it was really nice i bet everyone there enjoyed it they get to take away quite a bit of ornament like how many ornaments did they get to make i think that most people ended up making one really good one and then maybe an extra so maybe okay. two two to three it was it was a lot of fun all right so we're gonna come we're coming up on a break soon so i'm not gonna get too deep into another event just yet but i do want to introduce some of the ones that are coming up that we will be talking about when we come back from our break january 25th oh, um shoot health rhythms drumming to distress uh february 1st meditation at the museum february 8th tour discussing printmaking process february 15th valentine's readings stories of love wow all right so i'm looking forward to getting more into these and this these all sorry all of these events take place on thursdays yes ma'am all right so we're going to get ready for a quick break so please stay tuned to community conversations on klek 102.5 fm i'm your host quibila Harden, along with miss shannon smithy and the phone lines are open if you have any questions or comments 870-277-1080 and don't forget to check out the bradburyartmuseum.org for more um for links to their different events stay tuned and we'll be right back after these announcements you're listening to community conversations on klek 102.5 fm we'll be right back How can your family have a throwback Thursday together? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. The best evenings at home with my kids weren't spent with our fingers on our smartphones or watching TV. The best times were nights when we sat around on the floor and played Monopoly, a game of cards, or when we played kickball in the backyard. Throwback Thursday is a day when we can look back on how things used to be and post an online picture from long ago. Maybe we could take that idea a step further and have throwback Thursdays with our families. Here's how. First, no electronics for the night, just time together. Second, have real conversations. Ask one another about your week. For more throwback Thursday ideas for your family, visit my blog at markmerrill.com. Remember, your family first. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Quibila Hart, and I am joined by Ms. Sh- Ms. Shannon Smithy from the Bradbury Art Museum from Arkansas State. Well, on the campus of Arkansas State University, it's not necessarily inside the Fowler Center. It's No, we are located inside inside of the Fowler Fowler Center, Center, but you have another entrance. We're on the north side of the building. The south uh, side of the Fowler Center is the theater department. Okay. All right. So like I said, before we went to break, we're going to be discussing some more events. Now, these particular ones that I listed off are Thursday events. And then there also are some weekend workshops. So we're going to get into those as well. But let's go into our Thursday events. We have January 25th, which is next Thursday heart rhythms drumming to distress so tell us more about that one 
Yes, um, Dr. Pat Glasscock from the Counseling Center at ASU uh, is a health rhythms facilitator, and it involves a rhythmic, interactive uh, component where we she actually brings in all of these different kinds of drums and percussion instruments, and you pick out your your drum and your your percussion instruments, and she kind of guides us in this. Uh, drumming exercise she she hesitates to call it a drum circle so it's different than that um but like it, look, one of the things that i really loved about the first one that we did was she would uh, ask you your name and you drum out your name how was your day you drum out how your day was you wow. kind of make make a rhythm to your emotions and one of the really exciting things that we're going to do with this one is i've asked her if we could do drum in response to the art. So we're going to be located in the Bradbury Art Museum. We're going to be in a circle in our chairs. You'll have your drum. Okay. And then we're going to follow along with Pat's uh, guidance. She'll lead us along in the exercises. And then maybe she'll have us look at an artwork. And then you'll do a little drum uh, piece in response to looking at the art that kind of really out there right <laughs> i think it's really going to be fun and and one of the things i love about these kinds of events is that you it actually puts you in this really lovely state of mind you're you're, you're kind of it's like meditative like wow. after you're done doing the drumming you're just you feel really good and i think it's a really great community connection too you're connected with the group and i think if anybody's oh. ever experienced like fun group exercises you know, that kind of brings people together. That is really awesome. I'm visualizing as you're talking, it's like you are expressing your interpretation of what you see. Um, a lot of times we listen to music, and if you close your eyes while you listen to the music, you can almost visualize what that artist was trying to portray through the words, and you try to bring the words to life. So this is kind of like the reverse, <laughs> bringing yes. the picture uh, putting sound to the picture in essence. Yes. <laughs> I think it's amazing to think about how art is self-expression. And then if we can have these types of moments where we have a facility, an art museum okay. that houses all of this art that is self-expression of all these different people who've expressed themselves. And then we go in there together as a group and we all express ourselves in that setting together. I think it's a really potentially magical event and i like how you mentioned about how it can be kind of meditative um there are times that we have really stressful moments in our day i think this would be beneficial for someone who works in a high energy high paced job take this time to go and just allow yourself to relax and focus on something other than <laughs> work if you can yes. um allow yourself to get in a different headspace and um when we can alleviate stress, and we know this, we our doctors have told us, research has proven when you can find ways to alleviate stress, it affects your whole body, yes. your heart, lungs, you know, everything. And so um, we as a people need to find ways to get healthier, mind, body, and soul. <laughs> I believe that. And I think that it's great to know that there's so many ways that you can relieve stress and that there are many different types of meditative processes. You don't just have to sit there quietly to be meditating. However, that is a really great way to meditate, but th this drumming can be meditative. Even making art itself, looking at art are meditative activities and they can relieve stress. And that's why I try to tell people that's how, that's why I love sewing. I'm sitting at a machine with my fabric and my, you know, a pattern planned out as long as I have some music or the TV's on something I can just sit at the sewing machine for Get hours. In the zone. <laughs> yes ma'am. Mm -hmm. That is my happy place. <laughs> All right and again this event is next Thursday from 6 to 7 p.m. Now do individuals need to register or just show up? No ma'am this is open to the public okay and again admission free um, we will probably make a guess about how many chairs to put out, but, um, it, you know, if we end up having a large crowd, we'll go get more chairs, you know? Right. So, um, we are, we really want people to come out, bring your friends, bring your family. This would definitely be open to any age. Um, 
Okay. I think it's open to all ages. And get, let's take the kids out. Get them introduced to art and music and other forms of self-expression. Um, you never know what effect it might have on the child. They may go home and finish all their homework and <laughs> go to bed early. Hey, <laughs> yeah, get that energy out of them, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all righty. The next Thursday at the museum event is February 1st at 6 p.m. And all of these are at 6 p.m. Yes, ma'am. This is meditation at the museum. Yes, so we have invited uh, Christopher Earnhardt from the ASU Faculty Center. He is a meditation and mindfulness uh, expert and facilitator. He will provide us with a guided meditation in the museum. Um, again, this is open to the public, admission free. Um, we will sit in the museum. He'll give, give us a guided meditation. And then following, after you're kind of in this really open mind state of mind you, you just it's really calming then the museum will remain open for okay. a period of time for participants to walk around okay. and look at the art in this meditative uh post meditative state okay <laughs> now again this is one of those things that can definitely help relieve some stress um dr armina Kremstola and um, mr chris have been here before talking about mindfulness and how we can really benefit from focusing on being in the moment versus being in the future that hasn't even happened yet. Um, that can add enough stress to exactly. our lives. Or, or stuck in the past. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. But we need to learn how to be more present in our lives, period. Um, being present in the present and focusing on what's going on around us that we can control at the moment. Um, and working on your breathing and different things like that. So mm -hmm. I think this would be very beneficial for individuals that, again, work high paced jobs, have stressful lives, or even those that just want to find an outlet for their emotions or something. This is another one of those times that go to a quiet space. Yes. Yes. So it's a, it's a place that you can count on to be quiet, kind of like a sanctuary from the uh, crazy world out there, the hectic world, stressful world that we live in. And um, Chris provides a really lovely um, guided meditation. He's got a really great voice and pacing. He's really good at the pacing and it. And I think it's kind of nice because there have been, he's done this a couple of times now at the museum and each time when it ends, it almost feels like, wow, is it already over? <laughs> it, and it's kind of this amazing thing. And I also think that there's a connection with being with a group again, okay. where you can meditate on your own. And I think that we should all do that. But then again, it's like this idea of having multiple options of if you ever get a chance to meditate with a group of people, there's just something about it that just feels like you're, you're connected. There's camaraderie okay. that comes along with it. Okay. And so uh, we have someone that, on Facebook, Miss Helen Scott. She says, I love the art exhibits and the quiet environment. And she wants us to explain how to get to the gallery again. Um, inside the five percent. <laughs> Yes, so uh, the Fowler Center is uh, on the north side of ASU campus. If you are on Red Wolf Boulevard heading north, you would make a left onto Aggie Road, and then really shortly after that, you would make a right onto Olympic Drive, and then the Fowler Center is going to be on your left, and you would continue driving to the north side, so you would be closer to what used to be the Convocation Center, now the FNB Arena. If you were approaching, let's say you were on Johnson Avenue, you would turn on, oh, that road's name has changed. <laughs> I think it's, is it Bookout Circle? <laughs> I think it might be Book Out Circle. So if you're over there, like near like the uh, Johnson, there's that road that heads down <coughs> south to A State. You would uh, the Convocation Center or F and B Arena parking lot uh, connects to the Fowler Center parking lot. Okay. Um, so if you can find the First National Bank, um, what is it? Arena. arena mm -hmm. Then you can f just look around in that general. The Fowler Center has a tan brick and white concrete facade okay. with uh, columns. It's kind of like a reminiscent of like a neoclassical building. It's got columns. Okay. I think that that would be very helpful for people to also know that the front has the... And we even have on our sign on the front of the Fowler Center, it even says Bradbury Art Museum. Okay. We also go by BAM. 
Alrighty, so if you're driving around that area, just look at the buildings, look at the architecture of the buildings. I'm looking at the one, the Bradbury Art Museum, and it has a kind of curved, some areas have a curve, some yes. curve to them. Okay, so, alrighty, let's go on to the next one, which is February 8th, again, 6 p.m., tour, this is a tour, discussing printmaking process. Yes, I am so excited about this event. We have invited Mr. Uh, Evan Linquist, who is Professor Emeritus from A State. He was a printmaking professor for many years at Arkansas State University. I believe he um, actually uh, developed many different programs uh, while his uh, tenure at, at A-State. Okay. He is the first, per he, he created the Delta National Small Prints Exhibition. So it's his baby. So oh, wow. he, he got it started and he's been kind of giving me a little bit of background information, background history about developing the Delta National Small Prints Exhibition. And he is a master engraver. Um, you probably, if you're around town, there's a good chance you've seen his art and maybe didn't know it. He has it, his art is in banks and in places all over a state campus um, he will probably he will be there in the museum I will give a short little tour of, uh, of the Delta National and then he will actually speak and talk about printmaking and uh, the history of the Delta National okay and he will be there available for any questions that people may have and again this is at six um, it's, this is from six to seven February 8th at the Bradbury Art Museum to a one Olympic drop. All of these events will be at the Bradbury Art Museum and all of the Thursday events start at 6 p.m. and they go to 7 p.m. give or take. Give or take, yes. And we're actually, one of the things that's really neat to know is that we are open on Thursdays. We open at noon and then we will remain open throughout the day. And that, so if you, if this event starts at six, if you wanted to show up prior to the event, say five, 5.30, we would be open. Okay. All right, so the last one, well, for February anyway, yes. uh, February 15th from six to seven, this is Valentine's Readings, Stories of Love. So tell us about this one. I'm so excited about this event. We, um, this is th our third collaboration with the English department at A-State, English oh. Philosophy and Foreign Languages. And I've uh, been working with Dr. Kim Ariel. He is a new professor in the department. And um, we're hoping to create kind of a fun event, you know, based on, you know, Valentine's Day was the day before. And we're inviting, I have, one possible speaker from the community okay. and then we're going we're looking for maybe two or three students and then possibly a faculty member will also read and we're just inviting them to read poetry fiction nonfiction, a love letter maybe a funny card kind of trying to create an open-ended idea of a lo the loose idea of stories of love oh. and then the readings will happen in the museum and um Again, this is open to the public, admission free. All right, so I'm sure that it's going to be very expressive. Like, the people who are reading are going to try to maybe get into the mind of the writer and express that emotion. I remember watching a video. Um, there was an actor reading a monologue that someone, some other famous person had written that was no, that's no longer alive. And they tried to embody the attitude I guess or the voice of that person who wrote that piece and it was really kind of funny but entertaining at the same time so that sounds really neat I can imagine these students and uh, faculty and whoever else is going to read is going to try to portray that same and that's that's what makes it interesting when it's not just a flat read when you try to be as expressive yes as possible to draw the audience in <laughs> I are based on our previous uh, events that we've had before we had our nonfiction night and it was absolutely expressive that is definitely a word you could say um, the nonfiction night was amazing uh, the, especially the two student readers that we had I thought they did a fabulous job like really putting their hearts and souls out there I tell you it, it, it was amazing to see um, so I'm, I'm hoping for the same I'm, that's, the, that's what we're trying to go for is um, something really heartwarming and you know okay all right so again these dates are 
January 25th, February 1st, February 8th, February 15th. All is starting at 6 p.m. This is Thursdays at the museum at the Bradbury Art Museum. And again, for more information on these events and to read for the first one, Heart Health Rhythms Drumming to Distress, you need to please register. No, uh, no, that, no actually, the, the Thursdays at the museums are all open to the I'm public. Sorry. It's okay. I was looking at something else. <laughs> <laughs> no, the print, the introduction to printmaking. I apologize. That's the weekend workshops. That one you need to register for. And we're going to go into the other weekend workshops as well. <clears throat> okay, so we talked a little bit about introduction to printmaking. The next one after that is February 4th, Valentine's Day cards. Yes. So we're going to offer a um, really fun Valentine card uh, workshop in BAM Studio. This is open to any age. Again, you will need to register because seating is limited, okay. is admission free, all the supplies are provided. Since the Delta National Small Prints exhibition is still going to be on view, uh, we are going to incorporate printmaking processes into the cards. So, because card making can be printmaking. And so again, this idea that art is everywhere around us, it's all over, it's everywhere we go. And so um, I'll have, uh, probably do a lot of prep work, uh, you know, getting a lot of things provided for the participants so that that way when they come in, they can, um, it won't take as much time. Okay. Um, but we'll start in BAM Studio, or sorry, excuse me, start in the, uh, the Bradbury Art Museum proper and we'll do a quick little tour. I'll show uh, some of the print, prints in the museum and then we'll go down to BAM Studio and have our workshop and then the museum will remain open until 5 p.m. that day in oh, case wow. participants want to go back to the museum as well. All right, so go to the workshop, stay for the art or other exhibits that are going on at the Bradbury Art Museum. And again, this is February 4th, 2 o'clock p.m. and you need to please register. You can go online. Um, Valentine's Day cards. The next one is February 11th, Mardi Gras mask. <laughs> yes, so we, I'm really excited about this one. I think that this would be a lot of fun. Definitely open to all ages for this one. Uh, please register. All the supplies are provided. It's um, admission free. Um, and again, with this workshop, since printmaking uh, is kind of our theme uh, right now, uh, I will incorporate some printmaking included in the masks. They're probably going to be like more of a simple kind of mask made with paper, but like really strong paper. Okay. Um, and I'll have all different types of uh, materials provided but then we'll do a little bit of print making on the surface so you could have kind of a decorated uh mask is what we're thinking i'm gonna have glitter i think i should <laughs> i definitely think we should have some glitter right yes mm -hmm. <laughs> glitter makes everything better i agree <laughs> all right and all, um, once again these are weekend workshops and these events are on sundays starting at 2 p.m and again that was february 11th Mardi Gras mask and also please register so what I'm saying is for the weekend workshops you need to please register yes because the spaces are limited and all you need to do is put your name and email and how many people will be attending adults and children or some of them may indicate whether it's best for teens which is the next one mm -hmm. February 18th wood assemblage yes so um this is going to be uh, in connection with Robin Horn's exhibit, okay. uh, Spatial Differences. So her uh, exhibition is located in the entrance gallery of BAM, and she makes these lovely wooden assemblages that uh, are oh, really, assemblage. really beautiful. They look like they're multiple pieces of wood put together, but it's really one piece of wood. And she works with a chainsaw. Now, in our <laughs> setting, we're not going to be working with a chainsaw, a but chainsaw. we're going to come up with, um, we'll talk, we'll start in the museum and I will do a quick tour of Robin Horn's uh, sculptures. And then we will go back to BAM studio and uh, we'll make a, we'll talk a little bit about sculpture and we'll make these assemblages. All right, so we're gonna go to break and I totally said assembly genus assemblage. Uh, <laughs> please forgive me for that. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we'll wrap up some events and um, hopefully have some more questions. So if you have a question though, give us a call at 870-277-1080 or leave us a message on our Facebook live stream. We'll be right back. 
You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. There's more to budgeting than calculators and spreadsheets. According to BlackEnterprise.com contributor Patrice Washington, the wisdom and wealth money maven, getting your money right starts with you getting your mind right. First and foremost, your mindset toward creating a budget must be healthy. Washington says she usually has her clients call their budget something like a prosperity plan. The title doesn't matter as long as it gets you excited about creating wealthy habits and managing your money wisely. How about your intention? A budget should focus on a goal you'd like to achieve within a specified time period, according to Washington. Having a goal in mind will help you to live more intentionally when discipline begins to wane and the process feels more like deprivation. Once using your budget helps you to obtain a goal, set a new one. Never become complacent. There's always a goal you could be striving toward. Always keep your intention at the forefront of your mind. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Well, I'm your host, Quibi Lahart, and I'm speaking with Ms. Shannon Smithy from the Bradbury Art Museum, which is located in the Fowler Center on the campus of Arkansas State University. We have been talking about some various events that are coming up uh, for January and February. If you would like to learn more information, more details on these events, go to bradburyartmuseum.org. At the top of the screen, you can click, oh, click on events and it will take you to a calendar. And on the calendar, there are some pictures. Well, I say pictures, but something, a placeholder um, on the calendar. You click on that and it will take you to the information page for that particular event. So far, the majority of the events are Thursdays or Sundays. So just click on those days and you can get a more detailed description of what's going on who's doing the presentation or whatever else is going on for that particular event. And then for those that require registration, you can scroll down the page and enter your information to register for that event. For the weekend workshops, which are on Sundays, um, space is limited, so please register in advance for those events. Um, Have you ever had a case where someone maybe tried to come the day of, they just couldn't register or whatever the case was? Have you ever had a walk-in? Uh, well, actually, this is a new uh, new project that we're doing. Okay. Uh, we've only had one weekend workshop, and that was in December okay. of last year. So uh, this is our second weekend workshop. Oh, okay. So it's still uh, in its early stages, and okay. we're still kind of trying to figure it out. And it's like one of those things of, well, I have 12 seats that, that are available okay. for the weekend workshops. And if... This is kind of what I'm thinking is if I fill up those 12 seats and I end up having a couple more people who want to do the class, I believe that what I would do is just offer them another time. Okay. I, I, if so, if I fill up, I want you to be able to take this class if you want to take it and I will offer it to you at another time. It could even in, end up being on Sunday, just maybe later in the afternoon. Okay. Maybe what we could do is once someone is finished, you know, someone else could come in and take their place and maybe we could even squeeze in a couple more than 12, you know, we can see how it goes. Okay. (laughs) So it's still a work in progress. Yes. Alrighty. So, but we please need you all to register, go out, take your kids out. Now there are some that are, that indicate it's best for teens, uh, such as the introduction to printmaking and they would assemblage. Yes. Okay. Those are best for teens just due to the nature of the work and activities that will be going on. Yes. Um, but the other one, Valentine's Day cards and Mardi Gras masks are great for kids and family members of any age. Yes. <laughs> we actually had a family uh, enroll in one of our workshops at the, the in December for the ornament workshop that we did. And I thought it was lovely. It was so great to have a full family there. I think it's a really nice activity. And again, this is admission free. So, so we we're, providing a com- <laughs> we're providing a... a educational resource to our community I'm gonna use the word that um Brandy Hodges from the library says she says fun fun educational oh I love that yeah Uh, edutainment 
There yes, you go. yes. I'm all about those <laughs> ideas. I love that. And Brandy Hodges is awesome. She's great. <laughs> this is great. Bring out the family. Start creating these memories that will last a lifetime. Your child is going to look back and say, my mom, dad, whoever took me to the Bradbury Art Museum and we did this, this, and this. This is something that's going to leave a lasting impression yes. on their little impressionable minds. Um, and let's start putting some positive impressions in their minds and their lives. You know, art is wonderful and it and it impacts our lives in more ways than we know. Um, the older we get, whatever our career path we choose, art in any form impacts our lives, whether it's visual, performing, uh, audio. <laughs> um, art is very beneficial to our world. So It really is. So please get the babies out early. Um, now, what's the youngest you've ever seen in the museum? Oh, we've had babies. People bring their babies <laughs> into the museum. So I, And I love seeing that. Get them start, started early. One of the things, um, so I started this position in uh, July, and I did a lot of research about museum educators, you know, as I started the position. And one of the things that I kept seeing over and over were these stories of individuals who visited the museum as a child and how it changed their life. Wow. And I keep coming across stories like this all the time. Um, and even people that I meet at the museum, I've had them tell me, when I was a kid, I went to the museum and it changed my life. And I just keep hearing this over and over. And I just, it, I love the idea that maybe I'm doing this for some other kid, that, that their experience at BAM could really stick with them for years to come and, you know, open their minds up to art. That's really wonderful. I, even though I sew, I cannot draw. I would love to be a fashion designer, but I cannot draw the same life. <laughs> um, but I can totally appreciate anyone else's creative abilities to draw um, and really create from beginning to end, like to see the whole project come together. Yes, it is wonderful to see that, but sometimes I just like to enjoy the final piece because I want to try to imagine what the artist was thinking and feeling as they put that piece together um i guess interpret their interpretation yes <laughs> of the piece I, I really believe that we all bring our own story to any work of art um whether it's like you're in a museum and you see a painting or a print or you're watching a movie or listening to music we all have our stories and our background information and things that we've been exposed to you know maybe like i grew up and i was aware of certain pop culture and so when i look at something it's going to make me think of those other things you know you can it can remind you of something and so i think that we kind of meet art halfway and i think that a lot of really good artists are are aware of that and that they know that they want people to have their own interpretations when they see it. Not all artists are like that, but I, I really have noticed that a lot, that I try to stress that with on my tours, is that we're all bringing our own story to it, and, and how you're feeling on that particular day can even make a difference. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Most definitely. I can't thank you enough. Uh, so any more highlights you would like to give? We still have some time left, so any more highlights concerning the Bradbury Art Museum? No, one thing I do want to say, um, and I try to stress this a lot, the activities that happen at Arkansas on the campus of Arkansas State University benefit the community. We cannot stress that enough. Arkansas State University is not a separate entity from the city of Jonesboro. It is integrated, an integrated part of the city. And these activities are beneficial for everyone of all ages. So yes. please, please, please go out and support the art support. Arkansas State University, your children may go to school there one day. So you definitely be on campus all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. So tell us more from your, you know, experience, like what art means to you and why these different projects and why, just why this is important to you. Um, I just feel that art has the ability to really enhance our lives and um, it, it definitely adds to the quality of life, I believe. Um, and I love seeing what other people have done, like, you know, self-expression. And I just, I feel like it has, even to make art, to view art, is just really beneficial to all people. All right, so what type of art or do you find yourself or do you have time to create anything in particular at home? Oh, wow. Um, yes, the, having the time with a full-time job to be also be an artist is definitely a challenge, but it's not something that I'm uh, completely, you know, leaving behind. But I am a, uh, I have a sculpture degree and I 
I also make experimental videos and photography oh. and I'm really hoping to pursue that direction a little bit more I'd really like to collaborate with musicians okay um, I just I really see myself in a collaborative artistic setting I feel like the the types of things I'm doing now with my career as an art educator um, are kind of pushing me in a direction with my own art okay. that, that like I think that I can see where there could be connections with the collaborative nature like I'm really wanting to maybe make like music videos or pretty open-minded oh wow mm -hmm. one thing I would like to see and I don't know if you have done this before we talked about this it's been a while um, I call it mixed media in the art world where you take I watched a video on, on Facebook it was a classical artist um, I want to say cello don't shoot uh -huh. the messenger on that I think it was a cello but then someone added in another form of music it was beatboxing yes um, but I've also seen classical music with someone who is a traditionally hip-hop dancer and they work Ooh, together. the ballet with the hip-hop dancing is so I mean, beautiful I've seen so many different variations of yes. incorporating the different art forms um, I've seen people dance and someone paint while they're dancing or someone read poetry and someone paint like I've seen so many different things going on I wonder is that something you all have tossed around maybe happening that's a great idea I, I actually <laughs> I love that idea that you're going with and um, I, I, I love trying to have we, we actually had a dance at BAM last semester with the theater department. Okay. We had theater students uh, came over and did a dance in the museum in response to the art. So yes, we are very open-minded to doing these kinds of yeah. interactive events. So like we have the art on the walls and then um, I would really like to have musicians come in. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not sure who I have right now, but I'm for an event later in the spring when I get that more finalized. Like I would love to come back and um, please, please, please you know, do. Yes, ma'am. Like <laughs> well, we would look forward to all that's going to be going on at the Bradbury Art Museum again. They are located at 201 Olympic Drive, which is in the Fowler Center, but the entrance is on the north side of the building. Or can you go? No, you want to enter on the north side. Okay. So maybe some uh, of your listeners are familiar with the uh, Riceland Hall that's oh, in okay. um, uh, the Fowler Center. So if you've ever gone to an event at Riceland Hall, that is down the hall from the Bradbury Art Museum. The Bradbury Art Museum would be down to the left. Okay. And I'm sure are there signs and different things within the building to say go this way or you know, maybe some... Not really. <laughs> Not really. Uh, it's just if you're in the Grand Hall, uh, you would go down that hallway and you would pass by the restrooms and then you would see like the offices and then okay. the Bradbury Art Museum is at the very end of that hallway. Alrighty. Alright, so again, it's 201 Olympic Drive on the campus of Arkansas State University. This is the Bradbury Art Museum. Check out the Thursdays at the museum events and then the weekend workshops thursday's events start at six weekend workshops start at two but you must register for those all right so this has been your friday edition of community conversations on klek 102.5 fm join us on monday as we talk about thyroid health awareness so um that is something that doesn't get talked about very much for many people have thyroid issues and so we need to start raising some awareness to what the thyroid actually is and how it affects your body so stay tuned for that i hope everyone has a great weekend uh, and stay warm <laughs> thank you thank you for listening to community conversations on klek 102.5 fm a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. <laughs>